Hi, I'm Christy Strau. I am the Possibility to Profit coach. I help people take, <laughs> not that you have this, a chaotic pile of creative possibilities and make it into a, mm -hmm. a profitable business. And I'm getting mm -hmm. to talk with Ingrid Koch, a fine artist, a painter. And we are going to spend the time, probably the next 25 minutes, talking about how to take her career to the next level. So Ingrid, mm -hmm. you you just made a pretty big sale of eight, mm -hmm. it was right, eight paintings? Seven, seven, seven paintings. Seven for about $1,600 US, which is mm -hmm. a huge achievement. So, mm -hmm. and we talked a little bit before there, before I started the recording, you wanna make about $3,500. I know we're gonna do this in US dollars. Yeah, um, minimum. Yeah, minimum, more like 5,000, which would be yeah. much better. Yeah. So the average price then for the seven paintings for 1,600, is like $230 a piece ish. Yeah, about, about. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. were they all different sizes? They were different. The, um, four of them or five of them, maybe six of them were about the same size. Okay. And then another bigger. Yeah. A another bigger one. So, yeah. and then I want to back up and do this little arithmetic exercise and let's take 5,000 a month just to make ourselves happy. So that's, yeah. that's $60,000 a year. So 5,000 times 12 and you and anybody in their own business, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. um, can only really generate work about half the time. So there's mm -hmm. 2000 hours in a year. Like if you were going to work 40 hours a week, you're not going to paint 40 hours a week though. That's, mm -hmm. that's onerous. You mm -hmm. might paint 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So instead of 2000 hours, like billable, you have about a thousand. Mm -hmm. So if you had a thousand hours a year and you wanted to make $60,000, and you were just establishing kind of this number in your mind about what your hourly rate is. It's sixty dollars an hour. That if you if you painted um, twenty hours a week, so so that would be like a benchmark of how much to charge if you were just. This is not the only way to price art, but it is a way to start looking at it. Hmm. So take one of those paintings that you charge $230 for. How much time did you spend? Mm. Wow. Wild ass guess. Uh, it doesn't have to be accurate. Wow. Maybe, maybe two, three, four days. If we talk about painting, um, getting it framed. Yeah. Um, all of that, that may be about a week. A week to do six or a week um, to do each one? Um, let's see, a week to do a week, a week into 10 days to do the six. Okay. From and painting to framing <clears throat> to get it get it to a finished hang ready product yeah so a week and a half so week to 10 days and not yeah. not eight hours every day probably yeah. right like four no, hours no 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 yeah yeah okay and there and and these were small paintings five right. by five by seven so you're right in the ballpark so say it took 30 hours if it took a week and a half kind of like, mm -hmm. like uh, 20 hours one week and 10 hours the following week, that's 30 mm -hmm. hours. And if we mm -hmm. were gonna multiply that by um, 60 bucks an hour, you, you would have sold those paintings for 1800. So we're, you're close. Wow. Yeah, you're oh, close, you're in the ballpark. So yes, it is. And the good <laughs> news about this is, so there's, there's two issues. There's, are you charging enough for the paintings? 
And the other issue is there, are there enough people looking at your work to continue to sell? So you, yeah. Very time, but appropriate. I do yeah. feel one, I'm not charging enough and two, not enough. So both questions are spot on. Yeah, so in a perfect world, you would have charged $1,800 and the cost of the frames and the um, canvas, you know, sometimes that's not significant, but probably, yeah. you know, if we added on an, another couple hundred, three hundred dollars or something, maybe we'd be in the 2,200 to 2,500 range. You're yeah. still close though. You're still close. Yeah. It's, you know, you didn't charge 50 bucks a painting. Thank God. <laughs> So, <laughs> so we would be having a different conversation. So here's your <laughs> oh gosh. Here's your first homework. Is the next right. thing, the next thing you paint, track the time. Okay, track time. Yeah. So so, the, you know, there's going to be other painters watching this and feeling like this is such BS because it's so like an accountant way to look at pricing. And there's also a case that the better, the better you get, the more skilled you get, the faster you are, which makes pricing by the hour stupid. Yeah. You know, I've, I have one artist whose work I really like, and she is really fast. Yeah. So we're not just paying you for your time. We're also paying you for your expertise. Mm -hmm. But this is just a place to start. So, let, so, so we've got the hourly rate thing down, and you can see how long it takes you to paint your next one just out of curiosity. And from beginning mm -hmm. to end too, mm -hmm. you know, including the framing and all that stuff. Right. The next way to price is by the gut. Mm -hmm. so when you sold these paintings, do you remember how you felt? Uh, I felt that I could have, I felt a little shortchanged. Yeah. I okay. felt that, and I usually, Usually I try to, what I call right brain, left brain. Yeah, yeah, which is exactly what we're doing here. Exactly, and come to a place where it feels right inside. Mm -hmm. And I can tell when I'm below the mark because I feel, it just feels a little icky, <laughs> you know? And it feels, ah. Uh, and because I've had experiences where I'm spot on on that price and there is there, it's, you know, it's, it just feels good. It, it feels equitable. Right. And it it's feels win-win. Mm -hmm. And equal energy exchange. So exactly. what, yeah. What caused you to price them lower than your gut was happy with? The truth is that um, it was a combination of things. Mm -hmm. Um, at the beginning of the year, I was just guided to review the prices. And um, I reviewed some and others weren't reviewed. So it, it was in a mix of things. But when I reviewed it, um, when it, when I actually got an inquiry for the sale, and I looked at, reviewed it, and I looked at it and I thought, is this really equitably priced? Is it, do you feel, you know? And, and I thought to keep integrity intact because I had published, I had right. set up a price list with, with the pictures and the, and the, you know, the price beside it. And, and I wanted to make sure that the integrity to me was more important. And I just write that off as a learning experience. Yeah, which is totally fine. And the fact yeah. that you're conscious of this is really, really yeah. good. So yeah. the, 
not that you made a mistake, the source yeah. of the price that was too low was actually when you posted the prices. Yeah. So yeah. that's interesting. When I thought when I yeah, when I when I reviewed when I reviewed the prices, I thought to myself, um, if I'm going to do this, let's just say, let's just say at a, as a business practice to look at the prices at the end of, you know, the beginning of each year as what has not been sold. And like everything else, inflation sets in, where is the true value of it? How do I feel inside? Do I, should I keep the price or should I mm -hmm. up the price? Mm -hmm. And, and to be guided as to how much to increase, you know? Yeah. And, and so that has always been a guiding principle for me. Um, I'm also very conscious of what I would call being desperate for a sale. Yes. Yeah, very conscious of that energy. And I... And I'd rather, because I'm so aware of it now, I would rather lose that sale and feel energetically balanced mm -hmm. than to be shortchanging and hustling. And it's also the whole art of negotiation. <laughs> you know, that comes into the mix as well. Um, a uh, 5% discount versus a uh, 25% discount, you know? Um, why 25%, you know? A um, uh, uh, cash sale price versus sale on terms, mm -hmm. you know, like a three month or a six month or a whatever mutually beneficial payment plan, mm -hmm. you know? and Am I discounting and still, and as well as offering you a flexible payment plan? So yeah. those things come into play. You know, those are the, the issues that come up and, and, and I go inside to feel how that feels. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, what I want is, is reciprocate. Yes. To reciprocate the energy. I'm happy to sell. You're happy to pay. I'm yeah. happy to create and happy to bring it to a place where it's saleable mm -hmm. and happy to share that with you mm -hmm. in exchange for that cash and, and mm -hmm. wanting that you're happy to invest yeah. in that. <laughs> you know? And not just they're happy, but you're also happy. So yeah. So every, you. it's a, reciprocating happiness joy yeah. all the way you know yeah so you said you were guided what are you guided by intuition that, in, that god yeah intuition god. yeah intuition whatever we, i'm not gonna label it as yeah i'm not, gonna, I'm not getting to the semantics mm -hmm. but as you said earlier your gut feeling and my gut never lies to me <laughs> so that's my intuition and that never it when that speaks to me Mm -hmm. If I'm even second guessing it, my that inner feeling says, uh uh, nope, mm -hmm. don't go there. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. You compromise okay. it, you know, and I trust that. Mm -hmm. I trust that. I'm at that place you now where if my gut says no, nope, I don't care how fat that carrot gets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you it's know? It's good to be true to, you know, to what you know is right. Yeah. It's really smart. So, yeah. but it gets, it gets tricky. It gets very tricky because as artists, we always want sales. We, we need income just like everybody else to exactly. take care of ourselves and our family and whatever else we need to take care of, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. um, it's it's very interesting for me the lessons that come up though because I what I share with you aren't complaints they're not problems that no they're opportunities for growth yeah and they're giving me the landscape to sharpen you know my navigational skills to be successful at it and to and success on all levels, success mm -hmm. in, in that monetary exchange, in that inner being exchange. Mm -hmm. um, 
as an entrepreneur, success in all areas. And that's an ongoing process. Yeah. So, so I'm other, an, yeah, oh no, go ahead, finish that. And then I'm yeah, I'm, I'm a student who is ever learning because it, there's always more to learn and understand in order to grow. Yeah, yeah, that's totally yeah. true. So the other issue, in addition to pricing, is do you have yeah. enough flow of potential customers? Where are your clients coming from? That's interesting. Um, that was that sale was local. Okay. And and it was from it was from a collector, somebody who was collecting from me in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so that was you know that was good. Um, I where I need I know I need to grow, and this is one of the things that. I've just been open for the last year, really paying attention to. And I started the process and I know I'm to take it to the next level is be able to successfully market on the social media platforms without becoming a slave to it. <laughs> so <laughs> let me... Let me give does you that make sense? Yes, it does. The whole social because media. Because there, there are times when I don't even want to be by my phone. Mm -mm. I don't want to be, uh, no. I mean, Instagram is my business model, my virtual business model. Mm -hmm. So I go there for the things that I'm interested, to view the things that I like. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's where I have my art page. Yes. Um, but there are times when I don't even want to be there. I don't want to be there. You know what I mean? Like, it's too much information. Yeah. Yeah. And I know yeah. it's kind of creepy. And, so. and I'd just rather be in studio or in, in incubation, in my inner being, just creating. Yeah. So I have yeah. one other piece of homework for you. Okay. Which is to go and look at every single person who has purchased from you before and find out where they came from. If they came from social media, if they came from referrals from people, they came from. I can't answer that question right now. What is it? It's face to face. Oh, it's actually God. seeing my work. Really? Yeah. And how do they so, find out, how do they find out about you to come and see it? Um, well, a couple instances were at the exhibition, um, art festival, or it being in a space where my work is. They've gone into a space and seen it. So we could argue you you don't need to be on social media at all. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> however, 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 um, with, with the dynamics of the world today, um, and you know, what we've gone through between 20 and 21, <laughs> that dance that we've been dancing for two years, um, I have found that I don't necessarily want to be out on a boat, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and I don't necessarily want to limit my exposure to a physical, right. um, physical contact. Yeah. So I really want to learn without becoming enslaved to it, to leverage on the reach that social media has that the virtual space has without becoming a slave to it. Right. Okay. So the next time we talk then, yeah, we should talk about that. Yeah. That, that takes, that's a whole, that's another 30 minutes at least probably. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Please go see Ingrid Coke on Instagram. What is your handle? I have two handles. Ingrid Coke and um, Ingrid Coke Art. So Coke is C-O-K-E and then Ingrid yeah. Coke Art. And can yeah. people buy from your Instagram? 
only if they send me a direct message. direct message okay. right i don't have a e-commerce yeah yeah so then that's the third piece of homework or the second piece yeah to the, is to find out what you need to do to help people buy straight off of instagram yeah and I know Instagram will let you do that. And I think you can do it with Shopify and a bunch of other things as well. Right, right, right. Shopify. Yeah. I mean, My I've seen those artists who, who, I mean, I follow, apart from making art, I mm -hmm. love to see other people's other artists work I just that's as I say that's my shopping mall mm -hmm. so I enjoy seeing other people's work and I've noted that they have um make it easy accessible for buy right there are yeah. some because of my location though there's some amount of challenge yeah with that there is um so, so there's a, it's work in progress. I'm still yeah. researching to figure out what's the best way to have that exchange. Yes. So yeah. a, a fast way to do it is find somebody you like, maybe who's somebody in Jamaica, somebody who is in Jamaica also and see mm -hmm. how they're doing it. So you don't have to flail around all over the place. Find somebody right, right. and copy them. Okay, we are going to talk again. This is Ingrid, yeah. Kirk, a fine artist, also an art teacher. And yeah. the next time we talk, we're going to talk about how to, I sort of hate this word, but monetize Instagram or how to make it easier for people to buy. Yeah. Yeah. How to make it easy, because that's what I want. Yes. Yeah. And that's something okay. easy and something trustworthy. Yes. Something credible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Ingrid Coke. All right. Instagram and Ingrid Coke art on Instagram. Thank you. Right.